The iPhone 8 and 8 Plus come loaded with Apple's new A11 Bionic processor. Before we compare benchmarks, let's take a look at the new A11 Bionic processor and what else it brings to the table. If you're not interested in that, feel free to skip ahead. The chip now boasts a 6-core design, splitting into high-performance and high-efficiency cores. Apple states that the two performance-optimized general-purpose CPU cores of the A11 Bionic are up to 25% faster than those in last year's A10 Fusion. Even larger gains come from its efficiency cores, which have doubled in number to 4 and are now up to 70% faster. Apple is also touting its second-generation performance controller with asymmetric multiprocessing that can now ramp up to activate any number of the A11's Bionic cores individually, or even light up all six cores in bursts, depending on the task at hand. The new chip also comes with an upgraded M11 motion coprocessor, which handles sensor data, as well as a brand new neural engine which handles machine learning algorithms and enables additional features coming to the iPhone X, notably Face ID, Animoji, and others. The A11 Bionic processor also has Apple's first internally designed 3-core GPU built right into it. Apple claims it to be 30% faster than the GPU used in iPhone 7 models, which was already the leading GPU in smartphones. It isn't just faster, but more efficient, allowing it to match the work of the A10 Fusion GPU using only half as much energy. The iPhone 8 models have the same amount of RAM as the 7 models, with 2GB for the 8 and 3GB for the 8 Plus. The A11 Bionic GPU uses tile-based deferred rendering, which in 3D and augmented reality scenes will only finish rendering objects that will be visible to the user, which greatly optimizes processing. Although Apple didn't talk about this on stage, the A11 Bionic delivers Apple's third-generation SSD storage controller with custom error-correcting code algorithms, which protects your data and media from corruption and storage failure, as well as maintaining high storage read and write speeds as time goes on. The A11 also comes with a new Apple-designed video encoder, which allows the phone to create and save high-efficiency content in HEVC video and HEIF image formats. The new encoder is similar to the video encoder that came with iPhone 7's 810 Fusion processor, except iPhone 8's encoder allows users to record in 4K24 and 60 frames per second, and 1080p 240 frames per second. HEVC and HEIF formatted media offer the same quality as before, but take up half as much storage space for respective resolution and frame rate. Moving on to some benchmarks, starting with Geekbench 4, we saw a 22% increase in single core scores, 73% increase in multi-core, and a 26% improvement in GPU scores. In another popular benchmark, 3DMark's Slingshot Extreme, we saw a 45% improvement. In Antutu benchmark, we saw a 30% improved score. However, in Antutu's web-based HTML5 test, scores only improved by 15%, so you may not see a giant difference while browsing the web. We tested a couple other less popular benchmarks and saw an average improvement of 42% for the iPhone 8 Plus in those tests. We downloaded a video converter app and converted the same video on each device into another format. We found that the 8 Plus finished converting in around 7 seconds compared to 24 for the 7 Plus. And finally, we decided to test Wi-Fi speeds and found that both iPhones were slower as compared to the 2017 5K iMac, but were basically the same compared to each other. If you'd like to see any unmentioned benchmarks in future videos, let us know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media, and we'll see you in the next video.